I honestly thought I was done reviewing laptops for 2022, but here we are, another laptop came into the studio. It's a budget gaming laptop, thank God, I've only reviewed one this year. And this is the Lenovo IdeaPad 3. It retails for about $600 for this specific model, but last year's version with a better GP was actually on sale for $50 less, and I'll get to that shortly. Now, before I begin, a quick shout out to Best Buy for sponsoring this portion of the video because right now they have some amazing holiday deals. For example, the 2022 Asus G14 with the R9 6900HS CPU and a RX 6700S GPU is on sale right now. Usually it retails for like $1,650, but right now you can pick it up for about $1,150. That's a big savings for a very good computer. Another great deal is the Seagate Firecuda 530. This is an M2 NVMe SSD that gets read and write speeds of up to 7,300 megabytes a second. And finally, the Samsung 32 inch M8 smart monitor. This is a product that I reviewed on the channel. It used to retail close to $1,000, then it got dropped to $729, and right now you can pick it up for $400. Links to all these great deals will be in the description down below. Now, for some reason, with a lot of budget gaming laptops, they get really tacky in terms of looks. I like the fact that the idea pad is nice and clean. It's super clean, and when you pick this up, even though it's made out of all plastic, it still feels solid, you know? Clean lid, Lenovo logo, you have the extended back, which you could call this a budget version of the Legion lineup. These little vent looking grills are not actually grills, it's just painted onto the plastic, but you do get the location of each port. The only colors on the laptop are actually the vents on the back. These have been painted blue. The entire product weighs about 5.51 pounds, so it's not like super light, but it's not one of the most heavy budget gaming laptops you're gonna buy. In terms of ports, the IO is okay. So you have one USB 3.2 port on the left-hand side, you have your headphone jack, and then on the right-hand side, you have another USB port, and then on the back, you have your power connector, USB Type-C, this is not USB 4.0, it's just 3.2, RJ45, and then you have an HDMI port, which only goes up to 2.0. There's not a lot of lid flex on the top. It opens up with one hand. The hinge is nice and solid. There's a little bit of wobble when you open it up, but it's nothing drastic like the HP Omen. You can almost place the display 180 degrees. It doesn't go all the way back, but it does go back further than most clamshell laptops. You have the standard traditional U-shaped keys that you'd find on most Lenovo laptops. However, this keyboard is a bit too mushy, okay? Like you type on these keys, there's a bit too much flex in the deck of the keyboard and it makes it feel a bit too cheap. You do have that numerical touchpad on the right hand side, so you have your numbers available, nice big arrow keys, and a fairly big touchpad. It's actually pretty good for a touchpad, like it's pretty smooth, but the click to it is not as nice. Like I would have loved a bit more click to feel natural. Sticker placement, out of control. Like this guy went to a rave the night before, got drunk, came into work, and just slapped 400 stickers on the bottom left hand corner. There's no RGB, but you do get two levels of backlighting. And just like other Lenovo products, you do have the function Q ability, which lets you toggle between performance mode, auto, and quiet mode. Now the deck of the keyboard does pick up a lot of fingerprints because it is a darker color, so you will be wiping it down quite frequently, but there's no fingerprint scanner to log you in and there's no facial recognition. The camera, it's 720p, but it's just not Good. The webcam quality reminds me of a glimpse into the future. Like this is what I will look like when I'm 102 and I'm only 79. The display is 1920 by 1080. It's matte. It's 120 Hertz refresh rate, but it's terrible. Like it's fine if you're just gaming, but I would not trust this to do any sort of design work. It's just not very accurate. The colors just look very washed out. It's a typical budget display that you'd find on budget laptops from five years ago. I really wish they put a better display on this because it's such a shame. If all you're doing is gaming, it's passable, but I wouldn't use it for anything else. Now, this has the ability to turn the dedicated GPU off and only use the iGPU, so Optimus. But the problem is it doesn't have a proper MUX switch where you can just turn off the iGPU and only use the dedicated GPU. So it doesn't have that true MUX switch capability. But in terms of performance, it's a very budget laptop. Like this has a Ryzen 5 6600H with eight gigabytes of RAM, a paltry 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD, 
and an RTX 3050. The total TDP is 85 watts. Like it's 600 bucks, but there's a few tweaks they could have made this a better product. 256 gigabytes in 2022 is kind of getting unexcusable. And even this display shouldn't have been there. But performance for a 3050 works fine. You know, like you're not gonna be playing the, 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 the newest titles with settings maxed out. Like most games that are new, you're probably gonna have to drop down to medium settings just to get good frame rates. But anything older is gonna be just fine on this RTX 3050. Again, I preferably wouldn't want you to buy this for design work. And if you do, please hook it up to an actual color accurate display, but it's not the best laptop for video creation either. It'll get you through some 4K edits, but I wouldn't want to use this as my main device to crush 4K content all day long. If you're buying this to develop, it does pretty respectable speeds, but it's just not beating out some of the faster CPUs that are currently on the market. But when it comes to fan noise, it does a pretty good job. Like it's really hard for the fans to get loud, even with performance mode on. Like you really have to be pushing everything on this thing for the fans to get to 55 decibels. Usually it hovers around uh, the high 40s when you're gaming all the time, which is really great because most other high-end gaming laptops, they're usually pushing like 55 decibels and that can get really annoying if you're not wearing headphones. But of course you can throw it into auto or quiet mode and reduce the fan noise overall. In terms of heat management, brilliant. Like it did a great job. Like the CPU never gets super duper hot. There was no thermal throttling whatsoever. And it just did a good job of pushing its limits while keeping things cool. Now removing the back lid requires the removal of a few more screws than usual. Like you have to take this portion off first and there's a couple more screws still in and there's a couple more on the hinge that you have to take off, but it's not complicated, just requires a few extra steps. But once you're in, this is what it looks like. Like the cooling solution has been fantastic. So I have no complaints there. You do have two slots for RAM. Unfortunately, there's only one stick in here. So it's in single rank mode. I would have loved two sticks for dual channel memory. So if you buy this laptop, my suggestion is to go out and buy another eight gigabyte DIMM. It is DDR5. You do have a Wi-Fi 6 card that is swappable on the left-hand side. You have one NVMe SSD that's pre-installed. Not the fastest speed for 2022, but it's still fast enough. Plus you have an extra slot on the right-hand side over here if you want to expand the storage. My only big complaint is probably the battery size. Like this is a 44 watt hour battery. Like don't get me wrong, this AMD CPU does a really good job of keeping things efficient, but I feel like there's extra space to put something bigger. Honestly, it's built very well. It's just lacking a good display and I would have loved a slightly bigger drive and a bit more RAM, but it's getting really tough to recommend an RTX 3050 at this point. And in a perfect world, I would love everyone to get an RTX 3060 at the absolute low end, but not everybody has that kind of money. If you can, at the very least, try to get an RTX 3050 Ti, and the previous version of this from 2021 has an RTX 3050 Ti for $50 cheaper. So I'll place a link to that in the description down below. So that wraps up this review. If you have any questions, let me know. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.